fabulous. Um, so hello, good evening, and welcome to our very first Spit Dat Digital, the live online version of Spit Dat in Residence at Woolly Mammoth. Uh, my name is Kristen Jackson, and I am the Connectivity Director at Woolly Mammoth. And on behalf of the entire team, which includes our staff, our board, and our amazing company of artists, I just want to send love to everyone joining from home and deep gratitude to everyone who's working on the front lines of this pandemic, providing the essential services that are keeping us going right now. Um, during times like this, feeling connected is more important than ever. And so we hope that being a part of tonight's Woolly Mammoth Spit Dat virtual community brings some joy to your day and maybe a little healing to your heart. And we can't wait for the day when we're able to welcome you back for the full Woolly Mammoth experience live and in person. So we have some very important group agreements, especially for the folks joining via Zoom this evening. Um, this event is being recorded and live streamed. So if you are logged on via Zoom and you don't want to be recorded, please either disable your video camera or you can also log off Zoom and go on over to Facebook. Uh, go to Wooly's Facebook page and you can check out the event on Facebook Live. Now, if you're one of the folks getting on the mic tonight, but you don't want to be recorded, that's okay. All you need to do is send a direct message to the user Wooly Mammoth. That's right, Wooly Mammoth is here in the house tonight uh, and we will take care of you. Just do that when you're up on deck. Now the sign up sheet for the open mic is a Google Doc that will be getting circulated, if you will, uh, via the chat function. Now, speaking of the chat function, um, unless you're performing or like me talking right now, um, those of us on Zoom will be on mute. So please feel free to use the chat function to show our poets and comedians some love. Uh, now, when chatting, please do show respect and practice the same kind of community care that you would if you were in the same building together. Language that is abusive or harmful in any way will not be tolerated. Now, another way to show some more love um, is to also tag Wooly Mammoth and Spit Dat on social. Um, we are at Wooly Mammoth TC for theater company, and Spit Dat is Spit Dat DC. So I hope all y'all are ready to have a good time tonight, because I am. And without further ado, I'm gonna turn the virtual mic over to our co-hosts, Dwayne B and Droopy. <clears throat> Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. It's Droopy and Dwayne B. Spit that and Willie, same team. We fight, we love like Chip and Sadiq. We fight the xenophobia that ignorance breeds. We love with poetic theatrical synergy. We fight our baddest for the status quo with our speech. We love the afterglow of our artistic orgy. We fight that system of fascism schisms. We love passionate activism that's driven. We fight the flat field that we're more alike than different. We love the mammoth giving us space to damn rip it. We fight the British community with creativity. We love the woolly sign, Droopy and Dwayne B. What it do, baby, baby. It is good to see y'all again. Um, I am Drew Anderson, also known as Droopy the Broke Baller. And my guy Let's is- up. My name is Dwayne B. The Crochet Kingpin, and we're happy to be right here with y'all. Uh, even though we're in our households, we're happy to be here with you all uh, here for the residency digital through Woolly Mammoth. Yes, yes, y'all. So we're going to go over the ground rules, but while we do, please check the chat if you are interested in performing and sharing on the open mic, because we currently 
don't seem to have anybody on open mic list. <laughs> so we got to change that because part of, part of spit that is y'all, you sharing your energy, your ideas, your voices. Of course, we got a fire double feature bringing us to live comedy tonight. Um, but that also, you know, is not the same without y'all. So hit up the Google Doc. Don't be afraid of the technology. It's a simple thing. Click that joint and get on the open mic list. So with that being said, rules of the space. Spit that is an open mic. We tonight have a, a comedy theme, but don't feel like you have to tell jokes if you are on the open mic. If you got a good joke, I'll take one. All right. Um, but boom, we do poetry, people rap, people do little short storytelling, interpretive dancing, whatever you could capture through your phone or, or your computer, whatever, that's cool. Um, we want to honor like you know a five minute time limit, pretty much. All right. Um, so we want to do that. And what we share, you are free to express yourself. You have freedom of speech. Of course, we are an intersectional space, so we don't do no hate speech or nothing crazy like that, baby. Freedom of speech comes with the freedom to accept the consequences of your speech. So there's that, because we ain't going to protect you. Just say some wild shit. Um, I've said wild shit, and I haven't been protected. So that's part of it. That's part of the growth. Not just growth, but growth. Now, D, give them a rule. So uh, there is a mystical being that is ever present, even when not physically present. I need y'all, wherever you are in the world right now, to bang your hands together and show some love for Fat Boy Sean. <laughs> That's right. Uh, favorite. Drew, uh, tell them, why don't you tell them the story of Fat Boy Sean real quick? All right, the story of Fat Boy Sean. Spit That has been going on for about 18 years now. Our first venue was the Java Head Cafe in Brooklyn, Northeast DC. Then we moved to the Mocha Hut. Then we moved to the Universal Kepler Angola Center. Then we moved to the Emergence Community Arts Collective. And then the Spit That Speak Easy moved to an undisclosed location to spit that residency moved right here to Willie Mammoth. Now, spit that has always been a Thursday night thing. Obviously it's Monday night now, but that's because the spit that speakeasy is still going on on Thursday nights. Monday nights, once a month, is our special core partnership with the great Willie Mammoth Theater. Now, throughout the years, every now and then, Valentine's Day would be a Thursday night, the same night that spit that held the open mic. The Valentine's open mic can be a contentious and divisive alienating thing. It can be a situation where everybody comes through talking about how much they in love because it's Valentine's Day and your single ass didn't want to hear all that shit. And so you end up with these couples, right? They come to the open mic and they say, I just want to do this for Valentine's Day for my boo. It is a brand new poem. You didn't know I was going to do this, but it's called I Love You. And it's a list poem and it goes like this one, I love you. Two, because of the things you do. Three, and you will always be my boo. Four, and that's why I love you. That, right? And then the partner comes up and they do some shit too. You didn't know I was going to do this. But this is the remix, because I was listening to you. And while you was doing your poem, I was writing the remix in my head, even though I was listening, because I was multitasking, you understand? And so this is called I Love You Too. And it is a sequel. The title has a double meaning because it's I Love You Too, part two, but I Love You Too as well. And it goes, it's a list poem. It goes one, right? So that's one way the Valentine's Day open might go. Another way the Valentine's Day open might go is people get broken up with on Valentine's Day and use the open mic to vent, to out their ex, to air them out. And so they say, I don't usually do this shit, but since people want to break up with your ass on Valentine's Day, this is called Fuck You. And it's a list poem. One, fuck you. Two, you right? We didn't want all that. I'm not saying we didn't want it, but we didn't want pockets of it. So what we did is we started the open mic list a few weeks early. It had three columns based on theme of what you were going to do. Love poem, fuck love poem, poem that ain't got nothing to do with love. Somebody signed up as Fat Boy Sean. We didn't know who it was because we passed the list out throughout the audience, right? So we doing the joint, we calling names and we had to call Fat Boy Sean. They might've been there. We said, give it up to Fat Boy Sean. Spit that show that love that spit that always does. They were like, ooh, Fat Boy Sean. Nobody gets up. 
We call some more names. We go through the night. Call Fat Boy Sean back. Everybody, woo! No Fat Boy Sean. Fat Boy Sean in the flesh shows up at the end of the night. Explains to me that he was a spoken, he was a rapper. And he was going to try spoken word for the first time that night. I don't know why he was late or scared or what. But we told him how everyone applauded whenever we said his name. And he said, well, I'm never going to do better than that. A spoken word artist who got applause without speaking a word, I retire. And you can have the name. So now part of the spit that legacy, legend, legacy, and lore is we call Fat Boy Sean whenever, like the original, we call your name and you're not here. Now I don't know how that's gonna work with Zoom. I would we can see you're here. Well, we can see your name. You might have went up to use the bathroom. So yeah, Fat Boy Sean could still happen tonight, but that's how that works. All right, D Town. We may also not have that problem because we're still looking for people to get on the list. So if you are a creative, if you just want to share what you're still what you've been doing during the pandemic, um, I know I'm happy because I'm actually talking to people uh, that I don't work with right now. So yay. Um, sometimes you just want to share. So uh, you can feel free to click into uh, the chat and see the Google Doc that was shared by Wooly Mammoth. Just copy the link and then uh, add it to a different window. Sign up if you're interested and we can make that happen. Um, also, uh, another being that is always here, please give it up for sexual innuendo. Sex in the window. Whenever somebody says something that can be taken the wrong way. Taken the wrong way. Feel free to point it out and enjoy yourself because that's what we do here every week at Spit That. Um, so yeah, a general rule of thumb is uh, you only do it with folks that are comfortable. So if somebody is sharing a piece that's like very intimate, very raw, um, it may not be the time to say, ha ha, you said ass, you know. Um, granted, we probably may not hear you since you'll be muted, but you know the deal. Da -na 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 -na. Yep. Um, yeah. All right, any other rules? I guess we'll make them up as we go. Yeah, because uh -huh. we don't really need to cover cell phones or anything. We sure don't. All right. D-Town, you got a perm for them? I do, in fact, have a perm uh, I that I was thinking about. Perms. While you're thinking about your poem, I'm going to let them know something about our features. We have yes. a feature tonight. This is our first time at the Spit That Residency featured comics. Matter of fact, I'm trying to think if Spit That ever featured a comic. Not since the first year of the ECAC. Wow. Who did we feature? Who? Um, man, the first I year we were at ECAC had to be like 2009 or 10. Mm hmm. Yeah. Do you remember? We're talking a long time ago. <laughs> well, you remember us featuring a comic, you just don't remember who the comic was. Correct. Yeah, I got to beef up on my Spit That trivia, man. But anyway, we haven't had, we've never had a feature, a comic feature for the Spit That Residency. The Spit That Residency started in what, October of 2019? Yeah. Mm, yep. All right. But you could count how many comics, period, in the 18-year history of Spit That, you could count how many comics we featured on one hand. All right. Tonight, we got two comics featuring for us, one of whom... Is Sarah Ishell. Woo! For us. And then other of whom is Anthony Oaks. Woo! So yeah, I see them hands clapping. Thank y'all so much for that. Show that love. I'm gonna tell y'all more about them features in a bit. You dig, but they're gonna rock, they're gonna represent, they're gonna bring laughter and light to our pandemic situation. So that's where we at. D Town. Let's get artsy, man. I'ma get artsy. Um, so as Kristen said a little bit earlier, shout out to all the folks who are working on the front line. Um, I happen to be one of those folks as well. Um, and so this is a poem, uh, it's sort of a love poem, sort of, but it references some of the things that doctors and nurses and others have to do um, as a matter of being safe and whatnot. So this poem is called The Songs We Sing. It is the summer after campfire for camp with for HIV positive kids. Me, chaperone, she, doctor, administers life-saving meds to kids who often feel they'd rather not be saved than live in this world. This is their week of escape. 
It's dark now. The walkie-talkies are silent for this one moment in the day where both are assigned on overnight duty, I think. Sitting on seats, maybe wooden guardrail. She's beautiful, I'm intimidated, this is the usual. I'm sharing poetry about my life, fear of rejection, prayer for the kids we serve. She is inspired, doesn't do this often, usually chooses not to share her talents, removes her guardrail this one time, walks away, returns with guitar, sings single most beautiful combination of strings and voice I've experienced. I fall in love while recording on my flip phone. We talk about arranged marriages, that finger on her left hand. I wish it were me. She goes back to serving meds. I go back to serving metaphor. It's all kind of gray. I haven't seen that doctor since. I can't find that phone charger. Poem. Thank you, Brethren. Right on, D. Bless up, bless up, bless up. So, um, thank y'all for listening. Let's let's see if uh, if we got anybody's name on the. Uh, yes, we got one. <laughs> and what a mighty one that name is. Uh, oh, thank you, uh, Bianca. Um, so, I'm excited because this uh, first artist, Drew. Do you have anything else you want to share before we call up our first artist? I'm Gucci, baby. All right. Uh, this first artist um, just joined the stream a few minutes ago, I believe. Um, and like they were like, bet. All right. I'm going to take this moment. I'm going to sign up and then I'm going to listen. And they're already giving feedback in the chat. Feels good to the soul. I need y'all, wherever you are in the universe, to bang your hands together, show some love with the reactions in the chat, and show some love for Bianca Pal Palamite. Palomisano, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. So close with the name, that was good. <laughs> it's Palmisano. Hey guys, um, I was not planning on performing today night, but uh, I figured we'll kick things off. Hopefully it'll inspire some other people to um, go ahead. So I'm coming to you live from my kitchen. I am trying to make uh, alioli, which is a mixture of garlic and olive oil and just requires you to mix for like a half an hour. So that's what I'm doing while I'm listening to y'all. So um, I've got two poems for you today. Um, one of them will probably resonate with all of y'all that are um, feeling a little lovesick, um, missing the chance to go out and see your partners, things like that. It's called All My Lovers Apartments. <laughs> And it's a shout out to all the places in DC. So hopefully the natives on this stream will uh, see some references that they like. I have traversed this notches on my Metro card and late night bus rides home from mediocre hookups. Did I find myself in you? Eckington, you never invited me in but the landlord wouldn't wait for your permission anyway. You told me about cockroaches in the floorboards. I'd rather have left to the imagination. I was 19, not ready to clean up your mess. Cleveland Park. There is nothing better than a lover three blocks from your apartment. I can spank you as hard as I want and no one ever knocks on the walls. I went to bed in my own bed every night until you asked me to move in. Cohabitation felt like a cage. I flew north for the summer. Palisades. You're a scholarship student on a three month intern stipend. How are you living in a mansion in the Palisades? Noma, I bit my lip when you told me you installed a roof deck on your townhouse. It's kind of hot to date a gentrifier, but I don't think I belong drinking wine at Pineapple and Pearls with your contractor friends. I will always take those five minutes extra to search for free parking. Falls Church. You say your parents are out whenever we fuck, but I think you make those noises just to goad them. I can hear their Birkenstocks pace the kitchen floor. You're that kind of Virginian who says they live in DC and it would always be a point of contention. Fort Lincoln. Well, you knew that wasn't going to last. 
Rosalind, your roommate has a taxidermy sugar glider in a jar by her bedside table. And I imagine it watches us while we sleep. I think I really loved you and that drug den mattress with no box spring, but you loved the idea of a dog and two kids that I never planned on raising. Giving you back your house key tore through every artery I hadn't clogged with Krispy Kreme on the midnights I was up waiting for you. Foggy Bottom, I never meant to date an undergrad, but your dorm looked like the New York walk-up I always wanted, full of Jews and secondhand furniture. I gave you my end table so you'd have one more of each. <laughs> Hazel Park, St. Paul. We both pretended I wasn't running away from something, but your tiny house in the alley behind the Starbucks was the balm for all my blisters. It is by far the darkest and dirtiest of all my lover's apartments. And yet I feel I might never leave. Yes, yes, oh my gosh, my face. Yes, show some more love for Bianca, y'all. Use those reactions down under the chat and into the <laughs> chat and whatnot. Oh, thank you guys, I'm loving these comments. You're sweet. Yo. Is it okay if I do one more or you gotta? No, please, please do another. Okay, cool. <laughs> so my second poem, it's called Exceptions. And I feel like this is very appropriate for our, our homebodiness at the moment. Um, talking a little bit about the routines that we have and um, how they get mixed up and broken. Routines keep the troubles quiet. On Sundays, you watch Breaking Bad and eat Chinese food alone. Every other Tuesday is happy hour at the Crown, a Tom Collins and two hours of listening to bad karaoke at the back of the bar. And once a month, you go to the Arboretum and contemplate the bonsai trees, the way they bend under tiny taut wires, growing imperceptibly each year, most of their work internal. I like being your exception sharing your crab rangoon and imitating the bad commercials, pulling you on stage for a poorly conceptualized chorus of, man, I feel like a woman, redirecting your attention to the begonias, those underappreciated perennial house plants, colorful and lacking pretense. They symbolize clear communication and simplicity. I am uninterested in adding more complications to a life that already leaves so much unspoken sitting on your cigarette stained couch at midnight, staring down the runway of your middle school eating disorder, the cuts on your thigh you claim came from raspberry bushes this spring. I want to be the cozy house cat you can tell your secrets to on Sunday night when lightning cuts across the sky and the world is an unjust downpour. I want to softly rumble against your flank, my content clear, and even as the waves of panic slowly still. Thanks. Yes. Definitely relatable, super relatable. Y'all show some more love for Bianca. Mm, like that feeling of, of wanderlust and want, something that's, incredibly real uh, that I imagine many of us can relate to. Um, folks that are isolating uh, alone, solo, um, and don't get to interact with a whole bunch of people without having a mask on. Uh, it's, it, it's real. And also shout out to Crab Ragoon. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, um, Drew Tang, do you wanna do a piece together since we have uh, a whole lot of no one on the list right now. We sure can do a piece together. What do you have in mind, Professor? Um, you know, it's been a while since we done. Uh, I'm digging you, darling. Okay, okay. Let me pull up the reserves. See what we're working with here. Uh, it's for the lovers, man. For the longers. For the people who uh can't be with the one they want to be with right now. Got a little hopeless romance for y'all. Check this out. Uh, 
I respect my nine to five as a way I make cream, but I'm annoyed by my nine to five because it interrupts my daydreams. Kicking it with you, gazebos in the park, free throws in the dark, you know my steel on my ma. I like the way you smile when I put them flowers in your hand, acting shy like close your eyes, taking a shower with your man. Aquaman meets a mermaid, so together we can abandon this land like Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah in Splash. I went from being stressed and confused to meeting you and being obsessed with your muse. Any dude would be blessed to get you. And I don't even mean sexually, boo. The Mona Lisa is a bony creature next to you. So why don't you and I see how togetherness flows? I want you on that runway wearing me instead of them clothes. Cause you relieve pain way more than Excedrin, yo. So what's up with you? Let me know. Cause yo, I'm digging you, darling. You're wicked like a fifth of Bacardi. Hitting like the spliff of a Marley. Little dime piece niche you need to get with the dawn. So what I'm saying is come and get this whiff of New Orleans. I'm digging you, darling. You're wicked like a fifth of Bacardi. Hitting like the spliff of a Marley. Little dime piece niche you need to get with the dawn so you could come. So you could come. Look, subject of what I do be you. Outfit sick as if your shoes got the flu. Dress got the bubonic plate. Coat custom made. Nail painted bright to shine light on player shade. Other words, mommy, you ill. Sorry, let me explain so you can know exactly how I feel. In my neck of the woods, we spitting backwards talk. Means you won't understand unless you hear and stop. Now peep the convo, pause collab so we can combinate. Set the place and set the pace so I can know what speed you need to make this thing go in the right direction so I can have your perfection. I'm prepared to thank my lucky stars. I've just been floating out here a lonely Mars and there's nothing in between us, Venus, but Earth. I walked this entire planet just to prove your worth cause I'm digging you, darling. You're waking like a fifth of Bacardi. Hitting like a spliff of a Marley. Little dime piece needs you need to get with the dons. You can come get a taste of DC, little mama. I'm ticket to ah, ticket ticket. Ticket ah, ticket 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 ah, little dime piece needs you need to get with the dime so you can come, so you can come. Uh. This track takes me back to Boogie Monsters, Honey Dips and Gotham, but it's Dion's son, Detox Young. No relation to Dre's disc, cause PZCD release date sacred. Valentine's Day 2012, Honey Bell. Same move, same album, still hungry as hell. But like a other Dre, I cannot afford to not record floods of flow. Another love below, so huddle up and get cozy. Bubble up on mimosa till your cup runneth over. Pump a blunt of the doja. Can't hold the one you love, love the one that you're holding. Many called to love, but only one was the chosen and i'm humbly hoping i'm the one that you chosen about to have a brother proposing let's make love until we're coming with oceans enough to wake up the souls of those who jump in the boats because i'm digging it darling mm -hmm. looking like the fifth of bacardi hitting like the split of a marley little dime piece needs you need to get with the dawn so what i'm saying is come and get this whip in new orleans i'm dick to die dick 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 to die die to dick 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 to die little dime piece needs you need to get with the dawn so you could come so you could come the Get it. <laughs> Dwayne beat a crochet king in the house. Droopy the broke baller. So it's called digging your darling. You know, something we put together a little bit ago. You dig? Uh <laughs> you got any announcements? I mean, I know events announcing events is a little different now, but it's not <laughs> nothing's going on. It's just a little different. Yes, indeed. Actually, um, so uh I work for a nonprofit organization providing uh Actually, we're doing COVID-19 screenings for those who are already currently uh, uh, receiving treatment with Whitman Walker Health, but we are taking new appointments for folks at the Max Robinson Center for folks who are not current, uh, current patients of Whitman Walker Health. So if you're interested in getting screened, that is definitely a option for you. Um, so yeah, hit us up. Um, you can go to Whitman-Walker.org and more information is there for that. What I'm doing um, outside of tomorrow, um, we do a stream every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday uh, starting at three o'clock and they're around different subjects. So every Wednesday is Word Wednesday. We interviewed Droopy the Broke Baller on our first one. Um, and talked about like art and how you use words in your career and how you bolster uh, your life. Um, so to, as a way to inspire young people to be creative in their career choices and the way that they uh, present themselves. Uh, Thursdays, we do Vibe and Thrive, um, so or all things health and wellness. And so this Thursday, we actually have a uh, segment called Sex, Milk and S'mores, where we're talking about sexuality, health, and uh, making some s'mores online. So yeah, build with us. 
Um, and then Friday, we're doing a Netflix party where we're all watching Inception together and chatting throughout the joint. So if you want to know more about that, you can hit us up at RealTalkDC underscore and get all that information. Right on. Do it through it. You understand? Just to let you know what's going on with me. I'm a teaching artist. My handle is Spoof School. You can follow me on Instagram under Spoof School. And I teach through parody. So one of my parody angles is hip hop Shakespeare. I like to fuse things that seem like they wouldn't go together. And so I've been involved in some hip hop Shakespeare productions. I played the bastard Edmund in the hip hop production of King Lear. Shout out to my people, the Fools and Mad Men who represent hip hop Shakespeare in Baltimore. And so last year we did much to do about nothing hip hop style and I was Don Pedro. So this, this crown would have fit that character a little better. And so my online hip hop Shakespeare class, we have a lot of fun. We learn about writing hip hop verses. We do Shakespeare, we break down Shakespeare, we break down verses and it's like 45 minutes to an hour, depending how it goes. It's 2 PM Eastern time on Thursdays. It's free, you dig? Just go to storytapestries.org Click that virtual lessons and you will find Drew Anderson Bard to Bars, Hip Hop Shakespeare. I also have a public speaking class on Mondays, 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. called Talk to Me. So it's a lot of fun. It's free stuff. It's cool. Check it out. Look me up. Just follow me on IG under Spoof School. Look me up on Facebook under Drew Anderson or go to storytapestries.org. And those are different places where you can find out the different stuff I'm doing. You're under dig. Nah, what's happening? Oh, we about to make somebody heart explode. I see you, Bianca. Much love. You dig? Yeah, you know. I mean, you you earn that love. You earn that love. So look, yeah, I'm about to check this list. And if ain't nobody on it, y'all gonna hear another verse from me. And uh, I mean, I guess there are worse punishments you could have. I don't know. I understand everybody, you know, we might just have an audience that really came to listen tonight, and that's cool. Um, and also we definitely have two dope features for y'all two dope comics, so y'all might have came to laugh. So in the name of laughing and to warm y'all up, I see somebody said they might read Peace to Dawn Singleton, no pressure. Either way, we love you. I'm going to kick a little something. I'm from Uptown New Orleans. You might recognize the accent. And since I told y'all I do parody, I'm going to kick the parody that I wrote about the situation. It's a spoof of my New Orleans brother, Mystical. He had a song called Shake Your Ass. So I did a song called Wash Your Hands. Watch your health, put on your mask, show me social distancing, wash your hands, watch your health, put on your mask. It came in from a distant land, but then it spread because we ain't washing our hands, we fools. And don't worry about the president talking about some Chinese Kung flu, that's just what he do. China started testing, so they the virus lesson. But over here, the Brooklyn Nets could get tested, but I can't get it. They told us stay home, but we don't. They told us wash our hands, but we won't. Be gone places, handshaking, touching faces. Contagious by the time they closed schools, it was too late. I see you sniffling, man, I ain't sniffling. Huh, huh, hell no, sneezing to your elbow. Just the symptoms got us confused utterly. Fever, fatigue, couldn't that be flu or something B? A dry cough and shortness of breath. Oh heck, until they start testing, we all guessing. Meanwhile, our daily hygiene ain't about shit. Your hands clean, show me under ultraviolet. Wash your hands, watch your health, put on your mask. Show me social distance and attention. No, y'all patients in the room for emergencies. I thought I told y'all fools before that ain't nothing but some allergies. Now this ain't for no common cold. Our hospitals understand. So if you under 61, take your ass home and wash your hands. Boom, boom. Wash your hands. Watch yourself. Wash your hands. Show me social distancing. You dig? Yeah. yeah. I see uh, Cody said, better PSA than any of the press conferences. Big facts. <laughs> I do what I can. Much love. You under dig. All right, boom. I see, I see, I see. All right. I see Dawn Singleton as a maybe. We, we have any uh, follow-up on that, doctor? Um, I'm, I'm looking for action on the list, but may not see anything. Uh, so... What I will do, I think that may be good energy to uh, to bring up our first feature. Hey, hey, hey. So something that's really dope. Um, and we I'm glad that we're able to still do this. Uh, shout out to Estrellita. Um, 
something that spit that has a history of doing we always pass around a, a card or form or something so that people can sign it and show their love to whoever the feature is um and we've been doing that for all of the 18 years i still have all of mine and uh and we didn't want to let that go in a digital format and so uh what estrellita did was create a uh, a google doc with a sign sheet where you'll like sign and put a good message uh, to the feature. So uh, I believe that'll get dropped into the Zoom chat very shortly. Um, and then you, boom, there it is. The feature card is there in the chat right now. So definitely uh, open up that uh, that Google Doc, sign a jump, put some good love in there. Let Sarah know how you feel about the performance, all the vibes. Um, it is hard to make people laugh. It is even harder to make people laugh during a pandemic. <laughs> and so, um, and it's super hard to do comedy knowing that you may not get the immediate response from an audience. So uh, these two, our two features have taken a challenge and they're about to make some magic happen right here in front of you uh, to help you cope with what's going on right now. Um, our first feature, I know them as a musician, as, and amazing, like got all kinds of magical things in the in the cooker, you dig? Um, skit performer, um, comedian, stand up uh, comedian, poet, just an amazing person to get to know. And so uh, I'm very happy to be part of the team bringing her to this stage. Drew, what do you have to say? DMV based Selvi comedian and songwriter Ishell aka Sarah Hernandez, stay serving delicious riot affections topped with flamboyance a la Moody. She can be found on Instagram under her moniker Hypo Feminine, posting cute cat videos, schooling us on pronoun etiquette, and chronicling comical misadventures of social misanthropy under such profound aliases as Thoughtiana. <laughs> hey, gentlemen and non-binary, please give it up for our first feature, but jokes on us, bringing us ha ha and healing. E shell. Hey guys, what's up? Um, can you all see me? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So hi, I am Michelle. I also go by Sarah Hernandez, my government name. Um, mostly for comedy, I just want to help the hosts not feel like you know, an awkward white substitute teacher that just has to pronounce ethnic names. It's just now anything to help. Um, a little bit about myself. I, uh, I grew up poor, I grew up overweight, and I grew up with eczema that was so bad. My eyebrows uh, briefly disappeared for a period of time. Um, I don't know where they went. Um, and it's what's a setting is no one could really tell how upset I was. Um, but it's fine. With all of those mixes of experiences, um, I can confidently say that um, my childhood really prepared me for social distancing, uh, self-quarantine, self-isolation. Uh, I think I got this. I think I really do. But uh, yeah, I remember I took Myers-Briggs, that personality test for the first time in high school. And uh, it said I was an introvert, right? Uh, but they asked me an odd question. It was, um, what do you do on your Saturday night? Um, and being that I was underage, I didn't have friends or hobbies, uh, that question kind of felt like a little bit of a personal attack. Uh, but it's okay. It's okay. It took 10 years to realize I'm not an introvert at all. It's just anxiety. But we got there. We did. We did. Yeah. Um, I know. I also grew up Jehovah's Witness. And, uh, and while everybody is validly fearful for everything that's going on with this pandemic, I feel like I'm a little burnt out on the fear of the end times. I'm retired on that, I think. Uh, 
No, but uh, now I do what I believe is the opposite of what it uh, means to be a part of a fear-driven religious community. Um, what is it, you may ask? I'm so glad. Um, it is, I watch by myself uh, people on the internet eating food over a microphone. I feel like I might have lost some of you all. That's okay. I've got you. I've got you. No, um, what these videos are called, they're called ASMR videos, and they provide people chills, as you can imagine. Um, <laughs> Whether or not those chills are of disgust or relaxation, uh, I think it depends on whether or not you felt you received, uh, received enough hugs as a child. Um, and as I stated before, I was a self-isolation bad bitch goddess queen. Uh, so I, uh, I watch these videos like Valium. I take them like Valium. Um, but make no mistake, uh, whether or not you are watching this video uh, with relaxation or disgust, if you sit down for 15 minutes to watch somebody eat, I don't know, an edible towel or an edible dollar bill, um, just Google it. You're welcome in advance. If you take 15 minutes to watch that, if that doesn't fully take your mind off of an existential crisis, I don't know what will. I don't. Um, and you might feel better about yourself. Um, I, I actually think that's the premise of daytime television. Um, like I said earlier, uh, well, actually, I didn't. I grew up, I, I watched a lot of Maury Povich growing up. Um, yeah, because when you're an awkward kid, like, that's all you did, an awkward brown kid. You just, you scribble paint on Microsoft Paint and watch Maury Povich all summer, you know? It's just, it was a thing you did as an awkward child. Um, I didn't meet a lot of awkward kids. I can't tell you how many because that was the case. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> watching Maury Povich Basically, I think I felt inspired um, to not become a teen mom um, because, uh, not because, you know, being a teen mom is horrible, but mostly I didn't want to be a mom that watched daytime television. Um, I'm just kidding. No, but like, uh, moms, like to be a teen mom, you, <laughs> You can't afford to be a stay at home watching daytime television. I'm grown. I don't believe in fairy tales anymore. Um, I don't believe in things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, I remember watching Maury uh, at 12 years old with my fake director's hat thinking, Maury, darling, give me some more character development. I need it, some substance. And then you'd hear, up next, these teen girls are in for a surprise of their lifetime with boot camp. Damn it, Maury, that's not what I meant, but I'll watch. Um, and <laughs> that's, that's what daytime television is. Uh, it's the Doritos of culture. Um, it's a... Uh, it makes you feel like you're, e you're having something substantial, even though it's not. Um, and I just, I don't want to feel judged because no, I cannot just have just one. My God. No, uh, that, but for that reason alone, I don't blame people um, for their tastes. I don't, um, because as the old proverb goes, um, if it's addicting, there's money to be made. Uh, but, uh, and sadly, PBS is, uh, is not addicting. It's, uh, it's not very sexy. Um, neither is fermented food. I don't care what the hipsters tell you. It's just not. That's why, that's why, like, I just, yeah, it's not. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you want anything that's good for you, it helps to completely eliminate all of your sense of flavor, right? 
that's why kombucha is so marketable towards white people, I believe. Um, that's your explanation. But no, I, I actually, I have a confession to make. I do like kombucha. I like kombucha with my Doritos. And after I watched Maury Povich, uh, I, reading Rainbow was my shit. Uh, it was. Uh, but I also grew up in one of the most wealthy counties in the entire country. I grew up with that privilege. So yes, what that meant was my family was more familiar with debt than it was with quality time, but it's okay. No, my mother, um, my entire life, she, uh, she is a babysitter. She still is. Uh, she's babysat for a lot of rich white people's kids. Um, to no surprise at this point, I learned a lot about what they keep in their fridges. The short answer is nothing. They keep nothing in their fridges. They'll have a massive stainless steel fridge with nothing in it. Um, but no, the, uh, the door is full. Uh, it's got a nice array of condiments. Uh, it ranges from sriracha, the token minority of condiments, um, the scary spice of, of condiments, if you will, oh, um, to olive toponade. Um, if you don't know what uh, olive toponade is, uh, that is correct. Um, no one knows what olive toponade is. Um, and then below we'll have a few farmers market uh, randoms like fennel head fern and uh, grass fed grass. Um, and then of course, there's like a chill bottle of wine down there because it's hard for Deb. She's got a whole brown lady that's taking care of her kids, cooking and cleaning her house. Let her live, okay? Let her live her life. Um, and even if you listen closely to the, if you listen closely to this rich white people fridge, you can hear a haunting rendition of Simon and Garfunkel's Sound of Silence playing in reverb. They still have a second fridge, except for this one. This one's in the garage and this one's actually full. Uh, it's filled with lacrosse sparkling water, every flavor you can imagine. Um, and then of course the backup bottle of wines because priorities, uh, priorities. Um, but yeah, no, my family's from El Salvador. Uh, what's up? Shout out to my Salvadorans watching. I invited a lot of people. Uh, we look as though we're, uh, we've always been preparing for the most, our fridges look like we're preparing for the most beautifully gluttonous apocalypse. We've been ready for this pandemic. So you just, you open up. You got over here, your sour cream and your various cheeses. Doesn't matter if most of us are lactose intolerant. If we're using this apocalypse analogy, fuck it. We need cheese. Then over here, we got tubs on tubs on tubs of red bean soup packaged in former margarine containers because poverty, I mean, sustainability. And then lastly, we have two kinds of bread, your standard and your sweet. Don't ask why they're in the fridge. I never really quite got the answer myself growing up. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, fear not if in the event this is not the apocalypse, we here in the Salvadoran fridge already hidden in the back corners of our fridge, we have Herbalife because nothing keeps you healthy and taut more than a pyramid scheme. Um, but yeah, no, it's true. Keeps you on your toes, keeps you fit, keeps the buttocks tight. Um, but yeah, the Salvadoran fridge really is uh, more of a state of mind, a way of life really, because there were only three people living in the house. Uh, it was just, uh, it was my mother and my sister and I. Um, speaking of my sister, I'm actually really proud of her. She recently came out as gay. Um, we're really looking forward to telling our mother, uh, cause as I mentioned earlier, former Jehovah, Jehovah's Witness. Um, to give even more context, um, <laughs> 
to give you more context, I, I haven't seen a lot of emotions from my mother. I've only seen two in my life. Uh, the first one is uh, was, you know, mad as hell, angry, standard, you know. And um, the second was disappointment. Uh, and I've only ever seen my mom disappointed twice in my life. Uh, the first was when Whitney Houston uh, died. <sighs> Whitney Houston? No. My God. And the second was when Neil Patrick Harris came out as gay. Doogie Hauser? No. Oh my God. Why you do that? Um, so yeah, we're uh, really looking forward to telling her. We're just gonna have to tell her, yes, mama, like Doogie, like Doogie. Um, I. <laughs> But yeah, my sister really is one of the bravest people I know, not only because, not only because she came out as gay, but uh, because she left our really expensive upbringings uh, to move to New York City uh, to study theater. Um, that's brave. <laughs> that is, that is no grocery store brave, but that's brave to me. <laughs> Um, no, but uh, yeah, and I've been talking to her a lot as of late and apparently things are not, they're not doing too well over there. You've probably seen on the news. I actually, a while ago, I used to make a joke about how I believe that the apocalypse would be due to a white woman who didn't believe she had germs. Um, according to my sister, I wasn't far off. They're jogging everywhere because they've got kombucha and health insurance on their side. Um, but yeah, aside from the fact that they're kind of spreading Corona like secondhand smoke, I also have this other belief. And it is that when white women are the worst, they're the worst humans. And if you're a white woman and you're offended by that, then you probably didn't hear what I just said and you might be one of those white women. Um, no, I have to tell you something, white women. Listen to me, all right? You have an extraordinary power, but I'm not a white man. Shut up, shut up. You have an amazing gift. If you choose to use it wisely, it can be for great good or great evil. What is it? When you cry, it changes everything. Everything? Yes, bitch, it changes everything. White tears are a superpower. Let me tell you, a white woman could shoot a man in the comfort of his own home while he's having ice cream, go on trial and cry. I have to deal with this for the rest of my life. And you're just like, oh my God, Amber, that sounds so hard. Do you need a hug? My gosh, it's so difficult. Wow, I can't imagine. But no, seriously, I, uh, I, uh, I think that I have to, this is my proposition, white women. If you band together in self-quarantine, and somehow find a way to use this magical power. I really, I really think that this can, uh, this quarantine thing will be a lot shorter. We won't have to do these Zoom, awkward Zoom mic shows. Um, and we'll have kombucha waiting for you as well. Um, but anyway, thank you all so much <laughs> for watching. Hilarity, right on Dr. Ishell, gangster stuff. Thanks for rocking, thanks for making us laugh, thanks for bringing us your perspective. Word, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for having no me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, feel free to tip Ishell at, if you look in the comments, we got uh, Sarah Hernandez uh, one for the Venmo. 
All right, so if you look through the comments, to look through the chat, you'll see where you could tip Professor Eshell. And definitely light up the feature card I just did. Show some love in the comments. We're going to turn that into a PDF and send it to him. That type of deal. So show your love. You're, you're one of a kind. Oh, Leave some voids. Leave some voids for our feature. You dig? Our first feature. We got another one coming up for you because, you know, the high high ain't done. We about to keep this healing high high and humor cracking. I see Anthony Oaks warming up and getting hyped. That's what it is. You know? So look here. Uh, I got somebody else on the open mic list to continue this party. So let me look and see. Yep, I got a Dawn Singleton ready to rock for us, with us, you know? So Dawn Singleton, what it do, how you do? Hey, everybody. Um, it's been a very long time since I have done open mic. Definitely haven't done it like this. This poem um, was written about four years ago. I started poetry in college in South Carolina. I'm from Charleston, so I can hear your accent. The low country is where I'm from. Um, so this poem is titled Free. I gotta peel you off of me. Every vessel of your being has to be scraped from my soul and then my waters will flow flow down from my core to drown me in my own spirit. Spirit to take up my wings, to drink upon the power in my belly and gather every grain of peace. I gotta peel you off of me. Every fiber of your essence will wash away in the falls when my waters flow. Flow deep into the canyons at the bottom of my heart to meet old rivers, rivers of bygone love, and there I can be still, to peel you off of me, to be free. That's it. Thank you, thank you. That's all I have, thank you. Yes, Dawn. Dawn, thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you for returning to the stage um, and joining us tonight for, for Spit That. Good vibes, good vibes. Um, somebody was like, this background, oh my God, yeah. Uh, so I'm a nerd and uh, what ends up happening is Tetris's life. Like that's, that's just kind of, pay no mind that I came in 70 place that doesn't matter um yo uh is it okay if i do a poem real quick i well i'll take that as a <laughs> drew's like nah i'm like all right well i'm gonna take that silence as a yes um in in this context in the poem poetry context not in any other context period um this piece right here is called life lessons in five part motion um and yeah Poem. One, do magnets ever tire of their opposites? Do they ever wish that at one point in their simple existence, they may be graced with the presence of like minds? Two, I love you. I love you most. I love you most when you are far away. You are a presence, possession etched onto my soul, symbiotic being sucking the malice from me, and I hate it. Love is this treacherous path leading me back to rejection. You, the gatekeeper to my demise, guiding me along its well-traveled roads. I hate this feeling. You are this feeling I hate. You are love. I love you. Three, the science of the eye flips the world so that those who view it may process without losing their minds. I am the world, beautiful beyond comprehension, deep as darkness, real as pain, drilled and misunderstood, naturally flipped. Look at me and see what is beyond your grasp, your mind too fragile for its offerings. Four, when one hair is plucked, does not the entire scalp face pain? When one toe is injured, does not the entire foot ache? When one man hates, does not all manhood face extinction? Five, 
Meet me in a place of crayons. No casings or sharpeners to mold our experience. No numbers to dictate our outcomes. Only a unified vision and a heated passion for art. Let's melt down the wax and let our colors meet. Become an indiscernible brick of beauty. Then let's paint the town human. Poem. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Yeah. Yes, um, barbarian. Thank you, Broham. Wait, because it's like bars is something that we say um, to complement one's lyrical profundity and proficiency. And so I call a person a barbarian to show that they are a beast with bars, unkempt and uncouth in their truth, um, and so forth. Compliments that you have to explain that deeply should probably be rethought, but I just thought I would share my thought process. And now I'll shut up. D, I was on, are you talking, bro? Because No, I, I was laughing and yeah, I, I muted right, myself. Cool. It was one of them silent laughs. All right, that's cool. All right, well, look here. When I look at the open mic list, I see no additional takers, you dig? So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a short perm and then I'm gonna bring up our second feature, if that's cool. I see, yeah, I see that face. That's that ready face. So. A lot of my writing lately has been for my classes. I mentioned that I do public speaking classes online as well as hip hop Shakespeare classes. So for one of my public speaking classes, I did this thing on types of speech, including entertaining, persuasive, instructive, and well, informative and demonstrative. And so all of my examples were about Pac-Man because I'm a nerd too. So this is a Pac-Man piece. Pac-Man piece that I wrote for my public speaking class. You dig? You already, this is deep. You gotta really listen to get this. All right, check this out. My name is Pac-Man and my life's not so hot. All I do is run and all I eat are dots. Some dots are big ones and they make me strong, but only for seconds. It never lasts long. Sometimes there's fruit or a pretzel in here. As soon as I get to it, it disappears. And if I beat the ghosts, then guess what's my reward? I have to do it all again on the next board. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's Poetry Corner. Get it, that's, because <laughs> man. Anyway, moving on. All right, boom. It's time to introduce our second feature this super dope comic with the brilliant mantra, making everyone laugh their faces off so we can't tell who's pretty or ugly. D, before I get into this intro, did you have anything you want to share? Uh, tell the people how to get to Anthony's uh, feature card and things like that. Yes, indeed. Um, so in the chat, uh, Anthony's feature card is going to magically appear in a matter of seconds. Um, it'll be like, Bow, and then you'll see Anthony Oaks feature card, and then the Google Doc will be right there. Definitely sign that, show some love, um, and let Anthony know that that you're feeling what he's given. You did. Um, also, uh, just some some words from me on about Anthony. Um, Anthony is not just a stand-up comedian, but a consummate host. Um, he is incredibly uh, giving. Um, and he can he can hold his own in a rap battle. Um, I've seen many types of styles uh, coming from Anthony. And something that uh, is always true about Anthony is he is unapologetically himself. Um, like I've seen Anthony go up in front of crowds that you might have been like, I don't know if if a comic is going to do well here. Um, like he, you'll, he's a host at Bus Boys and Poets 450K. And comedians aren't always the easiest, uh, you know, art to come across in a poetry open mic, but Anthony slays every time consistently. Um, and so he's one of the hosts and he brings out amazing comedians because he is an amazing comedian. I've seen him doing shows up and down the East Coast, uh, making the magic happen. He's a 
host of his own uh, talk radio show. The dude is involved. And so I, I want you to get involved with Anthony Oaks, build with him, celebrate him. Um, and I'm gonna kick it over to Droopy the Broke Baller. Hailing from North Carolina, Anthony D. Oaks is a District of Columbia resident who is taking comedy on the East Coast by storm. A natural comedian, Anthony has hit the ground running and his clean yet edgy Southern intellectual witty humor will have you reeling with laughter. Wooly, spit that residency. Please show all of that spit that love for our jokes on us. Ha ha healing, second feature, the one called Anthony D. Oh! Yo! What's going I feel like I'm in a um a tribe called Quest video with this background. Like back in the day with the boulevard I landed, you used to kick the rim when the band was spinning. It was me, the five. And me, yo, what's up, everybody? Let me take this off of here right quick. Yo, beautiful. Look at all the beautiful people in these boxes. Beautiful people, raise your hand, show some claps. Beautiful people, yay. All right, okay, not everybody. All right, all right, well, shout out to the ugly people. If you don't wanna leave them out, you know. You ever had an ugly person give you a compliment but you can't give it back? Yo, God, it's so awkward. And I feel like you have to kind of downplay your cuteness to make the ugly person feel comfortable. Like it's, their, like it's your fault. It's always like, oh my God, you're so cute. And then you have to be like, no, nah, I'm okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Yo, it's so crazy. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some things out of the way. My name is Anthony Oaks, Cash App, dollar sign, capital A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, capital O-A-K-E-S, dollar sign, capital A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, Capital O, A-K-E-S, Anthony Oaks. I am from North Carolina. Anybody ever been North Carolina? North Carolina, yay! We make cigarettes. Uh, it's our claim to fame. Um, <laughs> I live here in DC though, the DMV. Give it up for the DMV. I love the DMV. Yo, I've been here about five years. I love the DMV, it's metropolitan but it's still below the Mason-Dixon line. You know what I'm saying? It's southern, it's Northern, but it's Southern. So you only get about, you know, half of the racism. And I'll take half, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not greedy. I'm not one of those greedy blacks, you know? I'll take half. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, I mean, I love DC, but I do kind of, before the pandemic, I'm kind of glad that we're sitting, you know, in the house. Uh, every time I, before I felt like I was going on a quest. You know what I'm saying? Like every time you go out of your door in DC, it's like you have to have your bag, you know, with like your poncho, your laptop, your bottle water. I felt like Dora the Explorer, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to go from your house to the bus stop, from the bus to the train, from the train to the block, from the block. And then you take a canoe, Pocahontas sweeps you across the Potomac to the Underground Railroad and Harriet Tubman goes through the forest. It's, it's crazy, it's totally crazy, but I love it here. Um, I love it here in DC. Let's see, so I'm from North Carolina, live in DC. Uh, what else about me? I'm gay, give it up for gay people, LGBTQ, oh, yay, gay people. Um, I didn't really know that I was gay though. I just thought I was really into men's fitness magazines. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, look at them. They, they have their shirts off. That's super cool. Um, yeah, I didn't, I thought about being straight though. You know what I'm saying? I, did, I thought about it like for a brief moment, but I just feel like, I don't know. Straight people are kind of like boring a little bit. Like Droopy, when is straight pride? See, you don't even know. See, no, I'm gonna I'm stay gay. I'm gonna stay gay. Cause y'all don't know what's going on in the straight world. I'm gonna just stay gay. Um, it was difficult. I grew up in the church, so it was difficult. You know what I'm saying? In the black in the black church, you know, it was very difficult being gay and growing up gay. Um, could you imagine, like, you're a child and you're in church, and the preacher's like, "You're gonna go to hell." Like that is super weird, right? Like the whole time, I was like, 
what am I gonna wear in hell? Probably something backless, you know what I'm saying? And get that hell tan, ain't nothing like that hell tan. Get that hell tan back there. Real tan, real tan. It's weird, you know, both my parents are ministers. Oh my God, just stretch forth your hands right now and just pray for me. I'm still unpacking a whole lot of stuff. Still unpack, yes, yes, thank you. Oh, I felt that, he caught up. Yo, so it's crazy. Both my, it was difficult growing up in that household, you know what I'm saying, with two ministers as parents. You know, you're going through puberty, you're 13. You know what I'm saying? You, you're going through changes, you know? What's going on with your 13-year-old body? I was in my room with the door closed. Like, my daddy took the door off the hinges. Like, you know, ain't, like, ain't no closed doors in no black daddy house. You, know? <laughs> you don't pay no bills. <laughs> you don't pay no bills? Open that door. He just took the door off the hinges. It was crazy. I felt kind of violated. But where's the next place that you go to feel comfortable? Like the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to see what's going on with your 13 year old body. Yo, my mom, I would literally be in the bathroom. Like my mom would be on the other side of the door like, Anthony, what are you doing in there? You know, Jesus is watching. So for the longest time, I thought Jesus was gay too. Like, Jesus, why are you watching me in the bathroom, child? That is so weird. Like, and you know what I'm doing? Like, now I got to tell your father. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yo, are we voting these clowns out of office? Like, show of hands if we're voting these clowns out. Yo, clap, clap it up, shake it up. These are some clowns, some old disinfectant, Lysol injecting clowns Do we have in office. It's crazy. I per, like, I don't know, was anybody down for Bernie? Do, is anybody feeling the burn? Was anybody feeling the burn? Feeling the burn? No, you know, they have penicillin for that now. You don't really have to, you know, feel it like that. Uh, I, I don't know. I had a lot of Black friends that were really team Bernie. Like, they were really down for, like, Bernie Sanders. I'm like, especially, like, on Facebook. And I would ask them, like, you know, why Bernie? They would literally send me pictures of Bernie, you know, with Martin Luther King Jr. I'd be like, okay, Bernie was really down for the cause. They would send me pictures of Bernie, you know, like marching in the civil rights with no neck, you know what I'm saying? I was like, wow, Bernie is really out here in these streets. Uh, and then somebody sent me a picture of Bernie with Malcolm X. And I was like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I'm gonna have to check Snopes for that one. Uh, but the straw that broke the camel's back was a picture of Bernie and Harriet Tubman. And I was like, wait a minute, is that real? He could have been alive back then, real talk though. Like, I feel like I saw his name on the Emancipation Proclamation. Thank you for my freedom, Bernie. Feeling the burn from slavery. It's crazy. I was really down for Hillary, though. I knew she wasn't going to win that election, especially against Obama. Like, she eventually, one day, she was going to run out of pantsuits. And once you do that, you just will not win the election. It's written in the Constitution that once you run out of pantsuits, it's a wrap. It's a wrap for you. But that's why I loved her and Bill, though, because you never knew who was wearing the pants in the relationship because they both always wore the pants. It's really... Really, cra <laughs> it's really crazy. Um, yeah, by round of applause, like clap, put your hands up and all of that. Who believes that white privilege exists? That it's a thing and it happens, white privilege. Yeah, yeah, I see the white people putting their, I love it when white people clap. It's like, hello, it's a thing. We give you permission to use it in your joke. I love that, I love it. Thank you, I love it. I don't know, it's crazy. Like. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes white privilege is in your face and sometimes it's subtle, you don't know, you know. I feel like Donald Trump being the president, like that's in your face white privilege. I mean, like with zero political experience, like you weren't even class president, treasurer, secretary, hall monitor, safety patrol, zero experience. Like, I mean, 
you have to have three years of experience to be the manager at the Waffle House. And you're the whole president. Like, I can see if you were like half president, then I would be like, okay, you know, where you're half, you know what I'm saying? The whole president, yo, it's crazy. Sometimes white privilege is subtle. You don't know if it's, you know, you don't know. Like, I know a lot of you probably go to Starbucks. How many of you like Starbucks? I personally love Venti, Grande, all those weird names. Um, but they have a brand new drink. And I just heard of this. Uh, it's called White Privil Latte. Yo, do you know how long I've been waiting on this drink? Like, I literally went to the counter. I was like, look, I like two white privil lattes, no soy, extra foam. And then I did like this to get my drink quick. Did you know you get your drink quick if you do that? I'm like, two white privil lattes, no soy, extra foam. My white friend taught me that. Um, and then the lady was like, cool. So, you know, I just need to see your driver's license and your social security card. And I'm like, girl, for coffee? Like, that is extreme. Like... And she said, we have to run your credit for white privilege. <sighs> so I was declined. I just went across the street to Dunkin' Donuts. Like, is Dunkin' Donuts the black Starbucks? Because America runs on Dunkin'? Stay woke, stay woke. I call all y'all sleeping. Some of y'all can't even see y'all face and y'all was still sleeping. Wake up, wake up. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all got kids? Where y'all kids at? Y'all just up on a Monday night? Lord have mercy, I'm gonna call CPS, honey. Where, where are y'all kids? I can't stand kids, yo. For real. Kids are like little broke best friends. They never have any money. Like, sir, I know you're one years old, but where's your money? Like, life is not free. At this point, I need you to go in half on this rent. For real, like, kids are crazy. This looks like, what kind of crowd is this? I can't really tell all these blocks with names. I don't know by the names. I can't tell if you're like a Walmart crowd or a Target crowd. It's giving me very Target, uh, but I don't think any of you can really speak French, but... Um, yeah, I was in Walmart the other day because I love low prices, you know? Um, I saw this beautiful two-year-old, I mean, two-year-old beautiful little girl in the car with her mom. I don't even like kids, you know what I'm saying? But she looked like a little doll. I was like, oh my God, look at you, you're so precious. Shoo, 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 boo, 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 boo. Do you know this two-year-old little girl stuck up her middle finger at me? Like two years old. And it wasn't like a little baby should do it, like a two-year-old. Like, she was like, out of my face. Like, her thumb was out. Like, that's a pro move. I didn't learn that until I got, like, 12 years old. Like, weird. She was so rude. I was like, I'm going to get this home. So I went over to her mom. I was like, oh, my God, your daughter is so precious. Do you mind if I give her some candy? And the mom was like, sure which I thought was weird. She really should have been like, stranger danger, but she didn't, she didn't do that. And I, that's probably why the little girl is sticking up her middle finger. Um, but I gave the little girl a bag of M&Ms. I said, put it in your pocket and save it for later. And then I just went over to the manager and was like, it's the little girl stealing M&Ms on out three, get her and her mama. They are both thieves. It was sad when they locked them up, when they was taking them out to Walmart. It was sad. I didn't cry though, because I'm strong. Oh, what else are we gonna talk about today? You know what I'm tired of? I'm actually, I'm so glad I'm trapped in this house a little bit because I was getting invited to like a lot of parties, right? And I don't know, maybe y'all can, the fellow entertainers, y'all can, you know, chime in on this, but I don't know. I kind of felt like I couldn't tell if I was being invited because they liked me as their friend or they thought that I was going to give them free entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the cross I have to bear as an entertainer. Like, I would go to parties and like no one else would get introduced at the door. You know what I'm saying? But when I would come in, they'd be like, oh, here's Anthony, my comedian friend. You know what I'm like? Bob is a dental hygienist. When he came in, nobody was like, oh, here's Bob. 
get your dentures. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody made an announcement. And I really felt some type of way about it because once you do that, once they make that announcement, then here come the people with the questions. Oh, you're a comedian. Oh, tell me a joke. Tell us a joke. Blah, 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 blah. Look, these jokes are not free. This is my livelihood. You know what I'm saying? I put blessed sweat and tears into these jokes. Let me tell you, do you know, I was like, I searched within myself and I was like, what can I do to appease my inner pettiness? You know, because at the end of the day, I can be petty, petty.com. Petty, petty.edu, I'll teach you how to be petty. But also give the people, you know, a little joke to where they can laugh. I can roll my eyes and walk off. You know what I'm saying? Like that's all really I wanted to do. Um, and it was a simple joke. The joke goes like this. Someone told me, you look like an owl. And then the person says, who? And then they giggle. And then I roll my eyes like, and then I walk off and I'm good within my soul. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. Do you know I had to stop telling the joke? What the joke does is it brings out people's innermost insecurities. I went to a party, walked through the door. Oh, here's Anthony, my comedian friend. Boom, lady right there at the door. Oh. Oh, are you a comedian? Oh, are you funny? Tell me a joke. Well, girl, first off, do you need an inhaler? Why are you talking like that? Like, I mean, you're this shortness of breath. Have you had your test? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I told the lady the joke. Someone told me, you look like an owl. Do you know this lady looked right in my face and was like, oh my God, do I have an owl nose? Is it my nose? Oh my God, I'm like, ma'am, this is the joke. Like you just asked me to tell, do you know this lady pulled me to the side and was like, do you know of a good doctor? I was like, oh my God, I'm in the twilight zone. I go into the very next room. There's a drunk lady in there. Oh, Mr. Comedian, huh? Mr. Funny, ha ha. And then she hopped up. I don't know why she hopped. She was drunk. Um, apparently. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this home. Told her the same exact joke. Someone told me, you look like an owl. Do you know this lady looked right in my face and was like, you know what? I bet it was Keisha. I bet it was Keisha. I've been telling her that I'm gonna get her as soon as I heard what she said. Like y'all, I didn't know what to do. Like mind you, this is an office party. I just, did, I mean, I was speechless like, but then you know, I just went down into my soul and looked into my pettiness and looked her right in her face and was like, you know what? It was Keisha. And then I got my coat and then I left. That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anthony Oaks, the comedian. I host a show called Black Think Tank uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. I also do a show called Thursday Night Tea with Anthony um, on Thursday nights at 7. Uh, you can catch me on all social media platforms. Uh, shout out to the Flunky. Shout out to all of Bus Boys and Poets host and performer. Shout out to Droopy, uh, Dwayne, Kristen. Uh, shout out to Sarah, I love you. You guys are amazing. Uh, and follow me on social media. Again, my cash app is dollar sign, Anthony Oaks. The A is capitalized and the O is capitalized. Love you all, take care. Living your truth. Word. Hilarious words yeah. to Anthony Oaks, man. Shout out to Eshell, both of our first Spit That Residency comic features, blessing us, bringing the light, bringing the creativity. I love it all. I, I'm, I'm sure y'all did as well. Thank y'all for coming to rock with us, you know.
Um, I wanted to give a big shout out to Willie Mammoth Theater, who's been just such amazing partners for us, continue to support us and help push us forward. I look forward to the day that we can physically be back in the Willie space to mm -hmm. only do the spit that residency, but also to check out and support their amazing and revolutionary plays that they got, that they continue to feature. Um, and so much love to Willie for their mission and um, for our place in making that, helping that mission be spread. So look, keep stay on the lookout for some do, new and different things that are coming out with the relationship between Spit That and Willie because we're gonna keep it cracking, you know. Yes, indeed. And shout out to to all of the Willie fam that's helping make this happen because it's not as simple as like hitting the button and then the internet knows. Um, shout out to Naomi. Shout out to Eshoita, um, Kristen. Um, I wish I had the list in front of me right now um, so that I could. Say that again. Allison, right? Allison. Alli the yeah, Allison. Allison. <laughs> Allison, like shout out, shout Amanda, out to the whole squad. Amanda, Shelby. Where all the holding other it down, the Wooly Crew. Yes, yes it did. Myself now. The Wooly Warriors, word up, words <laughs> out. It's like a, it's like a, a mid '90s rap outro. <laughs> like, <laughs> shout out the whole squad. Boom. Oh. I'm checking. I don't know if we got anybody else on open mic. We still have a little bit of time. If not, you know, we might do one more piece and say our goodbyes. You know, I don't see anybody else on the list. I know uh, it's y'all are getting used to this whole thing of, mm -hmm. of, of being online and everything like that. I get it. It's our first time doing a Zoom open mic. I can tell you that Spit That has been carrying on the Spit That Speakeasy on Instagram Live. So if you go to at spit that DC, all right, if you go to at spit that DC, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the comments. That is our Instagram where you can on uh, Thursday nights, 8.45 PM, you can see us rocking, blessing me and Dwayne hosted. We have a nice live, cool, intimate, open mic on Instagram. I'm putting into the comments, into the chat, our IG. And then I'm gonna give you my IG. I got a couple of them. All right. Droopy the Broke Ball is where I put all my crazy sex, drugs, and rock and roll stuff. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. And then I'm gonna put at Spoof School. That's where I put my teaching artistry stuff, where you can find out about the classes I mentioned for public speaking and hip hop, Shakespeare, and all that type of stuff. Yeah, no. So boom, if you're in the chat, you got a whole bunch of information right there. And yeah, that, that, I think that's enough of my information right there. D, tell them what you up to. Uh, so I'm actually typing in my stuff while you were typing in your stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Cause we, uh, what is it? Tay Max and Zaymot out here. Um, so yeah, uh, at Crochet Kingpin for the crochet and stuff like that. Um, I started a recent Instagram for my photography called Not The Poems. Um, so at Not The Poems for my photography and then at Real Talk DC for the artist talks, the youth open mic and the sexual health stuff. Yeah, um, thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all yes. for, for helping make spit that what it is. Um, if it, if it weren't for the artists and the audience and the organizations and groups that support us, it would be me and Drew talking back and forth, which ain't a bad thing, but it's better when we got our friends. True that. So with that said, without further ado, thank y'all for coming through. My name is Drew. Uh, my name is Dwayne B. He best Drew. up the rhyme scheme. I, I know, right. but see, that's where you picked it up. <laughs> um, Drew Tang, uh, what, what do you want to close with? You know what? When I point your way, I want you to say, I ain't never OD'd off no weed. I point your way, I want you to say, I ain't never, I ain't never OD'd, OD'd off, off no, no weed. weed. Coke, your nose is open, overdosing. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Dope, your home is broken, comatosin. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Gambling, your dough is ghost, your poem broke, but. I 
I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Liquor, your liver is dried, killer, you died. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Sex, HIV, STD, bunch of rock rats saying, hey, buy me. Plus baby mama drama, cause she ain't wifey, but see. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Work, workaholic, working all the time. Still a slave, it's just work, you call it. Plus it gave your promotion to that jerk regardless, but. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Food, num 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 with your greedy ass. Sweet, greasy, cheesy, and give your diabetes fast. Obese, heart disease, off the heezy. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. <gasps> weed, smoke a spliff, choking shit. Decriminalize, po po, could kiss my ass to wrist. Glad to kiss the cannabis instead of all of that other Bama shit. But I smoke so much, now I have the munchies. So now I gotta eat because my ass is hungry. Num 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 with my greedy ass. Gained 20 pounds, though just a week has passed. Plus, while I was high, I was loving a woman who I barely know, but now she got my bun in the oven. New hassles, gotta get some loot and fast, yo, but I lose it in a gamble like a stupid asshole. So now I'm at the bar getting drunk to cope. Spent my last couple bucks on rum and coke. Then a stranger at the bar said, what's up? What's up, bro? You seem to have the sniffles. I got something for your nose. Sugar for my booger, that Scarface sunblock. Thundercats hold like I'm gonna face Mumra. Patty Pie high, might as well get higher. Now I'm looking like Bubs in season one of The Wire. The moral to the story is I don't believe in morals to the story. Cause hey, yo, this ain't no fable. If Aesop really wanted to prove a point, he shouldn't have had talking animals doing a joint. So fuck that. I ain't no Aesop. I'm ASAP with fucking problems, LSD and purple swag. But if you really think about it, technically. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Coke, your nose is open, overdosing. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Dope, your home is broken, comatosin'. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Gambling, your dough is ghost, your poem broke, but I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Liquor, your lip is dried, kill you die. I ain't never OD, yo. Now real talk, I quit smoking just for work. Now they stress me out, blood pressure rising for sure. It's been a whole damn year and they ain't test my pee, but um. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. I be late, late for work, late for court, late for bills, late with the rent and stuff. I thought not smoking would help my punctuality. But I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Now they selling singles and they dipping the tips. Ain't it bad enough they already cancer sticks? Now you outside tripping off that PCP. Ugh. I ain't never OD'd off no weed. Now hit the J and I'm more relaxed. I woke up yesterday and I pressed my slacks. Got out the door, made it to work on time. A homeless dude need a dollar, so I gave him mine. He got a water instead of a cancer stick. It felt good at work. Joy was contagious. Everybody in the office so productive. Even got commendations from the management. What I'm saying is don't be a quitter. Light the spliff up. Green ain't mean. It's a wonderful thing. And if you still fail, hell, you know one thing. I ain't I never OD'd, OD'd off, off no, no weed. weed. Yo, spit that family, Willie family. Thank y'all for rocking with us. Thank y'all for rolling with us. Peace to East Shell. Continue the comedy movement. Peace to Anthony Oaks. Continue blessing us. All the above. Thank y'all for rocking with us. We want to continue to grow this vibe. We're going to do so. My eyes are green. <laughs> it's like, nah. Thank y'all for coming out. Peace. Be well. Good night. Thank you.